Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. You know, I gotta say, I love the fucking show. Uh, I guess I should say that they might have wanted to take an extra, I don't know, four months in general to sharpen and make the CGI a little better. But besides that, let's move that aside. I really love the show. I had a ball watching it. There were so many things that harken back to my childhood and reading comics. And and again, this is a portion of my, you know, viewing experience where there's a part of me that's like, maybe I shouldn't like this so much, and another part that is elated. That they're even trying something like this. So, congratulations to Jessica Gao, who's the created it. Um, Tatiana Maslani, Jamila Jamil, Ginger Gonzaga, Mark Ruffalo's in it. There's Tim Roth, uh, Benedict Wong. People from the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe are in this, and they've brought in. Uh, What's his name, the actor? Um, Charlie Cox, who plays Daredevil. And it's got its own little B-villain side list. I love the banter and the silliness. I like the attention to detail for silly things that really at the time in comics were a little off-putting. Like, I'm not sure who is the first, but... For me, if someone was to say to me, Joe, you know, grew up reading comics, you have comics, you're a nerd, that type thing, I would have assumed that She-Hulk was one of the, one of, if not the first, fourth wall breaker in the comics, meaning she talks directly to the audience, the reader of the comic. And there were, there were comic books where she's talking to the editors and having fights with them. And I was, I almost cheered when they when they did their own rendition of it for this show. Now, throughout the show, there are the hints of the fourth wall breaking because she'll turn to the camera like, see, I can't even believe I'm going to say like Deadpool because I think she was first in the fourth wall department. But there's a part where she literally is fed up with the show <laughs> and she confronts the, uh, you know, would be uh, behind the scenes creators of the show type thing. It's, I don't like giving spoilers, a major plot reveals out. But Marvel, again, taking a chance. This is akin to maybe when WandaVision came out. The first three episodes of that, people don't know what the fuck's going on. Looking back at it at my review and thinking about it. Yeah, you lost people for after three episodes. But I gotta say, when Buffy, one of the best shows ever on TV was out, it had like a 12 to 14 episode first season. A little rocky, shaky, but the, the talent and the excitement for the show was there. I think Marvel's taking those chances. They are doubling down on what vision they want to go with and Doing it with quality. Now, this is where the critique comes in a bit because, like I said, you should have delayed the show a little bit. Now, I didn't mind, and it didn't draw me out of the show like I thought it might. The hmm, odd choices for CGI and what was displayed on the screen. Meanwhile, you have so many amazing things going on, so it was weird to see a really impressive looking regular hulk and then some weird things going on with the she hulk and how they showed a power but overall i loved it they even have like a real six foot seven tall woman on the set who looks kind of like uh the atrix um just really you know taking risks and i think it's applaudable yes i could definitely see 
a real um, rubbing of the wrong way of some of the audience. Like, this is not going to appeal to everybody. It's not going to give you maybe what you want out of a Hulk character. And it was never what it was supposed to be in the comics either. So, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with doing new things and trying out a new method of communicating with the audience what's going on on the screen. And watching her performance, this Tatiana Maslany, she's one of those women I've talked about in some of my podcasts where they elevate everything and then you start thinking about what they've been in and you're like, oh wow, she's been great in everything. You get that vibe? Oh, I get that vibe. And I said I uh, said some somewhat of the same thing with Picard, which I didn't like. Season two and one, I guess. But there's an actress in there who plays Laris, and uh, just amazing. You just want to see her more on the screen, and you get that with this. You feel connected to this character, and this the first mid credit or end credit cutscene was my favorite. Um. And it really put a big smile on my face. Uh, I guess I'll give a little bit of spoiler here because it uh, encapsulates the irreverent humor that it'll, the show will display sometimes. But we all know Mark Ruffio, Ruffalo plays the Hulk. Amazing, you know, whatever. And he's on the show to help and explain things to um, his cousin. Because that's Jennifer Walters attorney at law or whatever anyway there's um by the way like i said there are some great cgi effects throughout the show and it just so happens uh sometimes it's just you can you're always drawn to things but like i said it didn't really draw me out but uh Mar- 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 was in like the first episodes and giving it a just on being a hulk because it was a car accident his blood mixed with hers she became the she-hulk by the way, they do a spoof on the original series, The Hulk, at the end of the show. Oh, the last episode starts off, and I fucking loved it. And, um, all right, so I, I think I gotta get to a point here. Um, oh, so there's an end credit scene, and Jennifer Walters is drinking. She's a little slosh, a little drunk, and talking to, um, The Hulk, uh, Mark Buffalo, and she's saying things about um captain america being a virgin and it's her really playing bruce because he blurts out no uh captain america lost his virginity on the uso tour or whatever and she was faking being drunk and she's like i knew it and then she like leans back and like she goes captain america fall and then they they stop they cut it off i was fucking i'm still smiling and laughing about it there's some great things in here. Yes, they're not perfection. But give these things a shot. I'm I'm excited for a season two. And you could fuck all the haters and all the bullshit out there. You know, I even have more of a, a circle of um, content creators that I might, that I go to after I'm done. So I, I might have talked about the process a little bit, but I try to stay away from things and watch something with an open mind. And then when I'm done and I'm doing my thing, I'll go and then I'll start looking at other um, podcasts and stuff. And there are some you like and uh, very entertained by. But certain things, they harp on too much. And I'm sorry if you can't take a little bit of a raunchy um silly at times girl power show then i don't know what to tell you because it's a female attorney she becomes a hulk she's the cousin and if you know in the comics she's a slut she's a fucking you know just something that is refreshing to see on tv and yes again you might have wanted to tighten up the side plot but i guess it was done on purpose so she as she hulk which is fucking insane is 
goes up to the fucking people creating the show, that type thing. So, I can see where they were going. I think they pulled it off great. Now, again, you, there were rumors and hints about the trailers that were coming out, and the CGI was not, uh, was not that good. And I'm going to guess, to a certain extent, they were right. But like I said, I noticed it here and there watching it, but it never took the smile off my face or, uh, you know, stop my enjoyment of the show as I'm watching it. Uh, I just see so much, so many detractors from things, and I get, like, I get mad and I got upset when I watched, like, that new fucking Batman movie. And even if I want to talk about fan films or, you know, low-budget films where, you know, you're weighing the love and the talent that you're seeing, it just can't be, you know, explored. Um... I talked about Morbius and how I liked it and there's flaws in it. And it looked like someone with love and care and talent went through and put together the best movie they could. And like I said, if I could say I like Green Lantern and I'm going to enjoy myself at a movie, uh, I'm not really going to mind too much, but I try to be critical when I do things like this and I weigh it back and forth. I think this show is a highly recommended show. I think it's got immense potential and I'm talking like potential where, you know, you're not sure what a show like Buffy will be or X-Files. Marvel's got a real good baseline with people. And if it creates a bias or something, that's fine. But I'm still dying to get that total feeling from, you know, DC and the things they do. And there are some really good things they do. But here we are in like the eighth show of Marvel's cinematic universe, She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Now, it's even explained by the characters on the show, like, in a way, well, more than in a way, because Jennifer Walters breaks the fourth wall by talking to you, and it's a legal drama comedy, whatever, right? And she just happens to be She-Hulk, and what do people expect from her in a new job and getting fired? You got to be She-Hulk, and, you know, this balance between who she is as Jennifer Walters and who she is as She-Hulk, when she hulks out. And I have fun every episode. There's a couple of little bit of dry spots for me, and I chalk that up to, hey, people are going to like this. It's not for you. And I'm really happy with that. You know, I remember when you had to go through 22 episodes of a show, which is why shows like X-Files, Buffy, that really should get an insane amount of credit for the runs they did every year and the way television was uh, the blueprint for it. And now they have a way of shortening it up and trying to give you the best bang for the buck, eight, nine episodes. This is hard to do in the sense where I'm watching my Buffy and there's going to be two episodes a season that you roll your eyes at, but someone else is going to love. And it's not just my own selfishness and I want to see it. Yeah, I've talked about this. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I give no fucks. I wanted the Guardians I remember from the comics. Vance Astro, Captain 27, Nikki, whatever the fuck. Uh, anyway, they went with a newer iteration from the comics and I didn't give a fuck. But I love the movie, so they did it good, they did it well, maybe not aimed for me, and they got decisions to make like that too. But they chose to do this, and you knew this was going to be risky. This is a female-led show, way overboard in certain aspects, bringing like Megan the Stallion in, um, mixing things up a bit, like I said, with the fourth wall breaking, you know, and... Again, you look at this actress, Tatiana Maslany, and you just fall in love with her, and you fall in love with things you remember, because then you'll start, like I said, remembering where they're from. Oh, she's in this, oh, she's great in this. And I think there's a, you know, a criteria or an established trust with the audience for Marvel, and this doesn't let me down. But I can see this very vocal part of internet or the world 
people will view this as, you know, too woke or some bullshit or whatever. And I think it's doing what it wants to do. And if it is that at times, they want it to be that way. And I'm fine with it. We have to go through fucking decades of guys slapping the shit out of women on fucking TV. Or everybody complain because fucking one of the Avengers movie had a fucking minute and 16 second fucking scene of six women together doing the woman power thing. Like, who gives a fuck? Stop fucking complaining. It's so stupid. Yes, I think it's valid that some of the plot and storyline, the interconnectivity is a little, fall short a little bit. Critique. The CGI at times is amazing for certain things. And it falls short in different aspects. And you can see where they struggled. And I even had a little bit of doubt because I had a friend come over who watched it before me. And I said, oh, I caught something. I tried not to look at it. But the general gist was this. When feedback came back to Marvel about people complaining about the trailer for She-Hulk, they really pressured the teams to do CGI and get it done really fast and really good. And there was a bunch of internet things that came out and the staff was like, yeah, they're working this too hard, that stuff, you know. And maybe this has to do with dates of, you know, release and things like that and looking a certain way in the public eye. But you know what? Sometimes like video games, you got to bite the bullet. You got to take another six months. Can I, you know, I could see that. And I could totally understand people's um, dislike of the show in, in, in the aspect of it does draw them out. It, it is a little too silly in certain areas or whatever. But you have a audience from comic books can we fucking get back to the you know the foundation of these things comic books art word bubbles thought bubbles a certain progression of action and the panels and a, a theme and a feeling and a, it goes through and it has certain aspects she hulked through all that out the window when the comic was out and the way they did it the way they handled it I thought it was superb. I am fucking loving the show. Will I look back and this will be one of those shows where I go, oh, you know, I love the show, but I could see it's a bad show. Maybe if, you know, because it's one season and the show's a little short. So like The Mandalorian, it kind of suffers from that where you've got 30 minute episodes. But the goal was a 30 minute episode, 35 minute, whatever the fuck it is episode of a legal comedy and it just so happens to be in the marvel cinematic universe and it just so happens that the fucking attorney hulks out and it's related to this is comic book stuff and comic books are meant to be silly that sometimes certain runs of comics come out and i roll my eyes and never touch it but i'm happy they're there right i'm not there to have every comic book be my idea of what should be done so in a way, I also like the idea that there's more movie companies or whatever you want to call it that make Marvel Comics movies, like if you want to put Sony's universe, whatever. Although you get mad, right, when they fuck up a movie that you really like. But we've got this throughout everything. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is probably one of the best cinematic movie trilogies ever. And is it tainted by his work on the Hobbit movies? On them expanding it and putting in Cimmerillion stuff with the short story stuff and making it, um, you know, a, a bit filler. Y you know what? To some people, maybe. But if I'm going to get, I go, I enjoy the Hobbit movies. I don't get angry, bang my fist around. But I see the flaws in there and, you know, but again, this is uh, something that is Tolkien's world and people are trying to, who interpret it and do their thing. That's what these shows are. And this whole Marvel Cinematic Universe is based off comic books. And the fact that they're elevating and are now the biggest thing ever. Comic book movies rule mostly everything. And this changes with all things. I can remember a time, heavy metal, long hair, and fucking everything was the shit. Then it was grunge. Now it's rap and R&B. You know... These things change. The culture changes around it. Everything is a mixture of 
social and you know environmental i think this mo- this show is perfect timing to come out you take your strengths or whatever, whatever vision you have for the show even if i don't enjoy certain aspects of it i'm happy it's made this is a portion of comic books that has been wait to be told and believe it or not she hulk never had the biggest runs in the comics and stuff and sometimes they had comic books that ran that they knew people weren't buying in scores in bulk. And there was a time in comics where that was allowed. One of my favorite characters ever is Quasar. Wendell Vaughn. Mark Grunhold and I don't remember the original artist, but eventually went to, you know, Greg Capullo was doing, the, uh, doing it. Now, yes, is it based in a ripoff of the Green Lantern? Yes, but guess what? My first love was of Green Lantern. But I got tired of the... I wasn't into the comic that much no more. I'd rather watch Superman. You know, I'm talking about young. I'm born in 71. Um, yet, when I, as soon as I picked up the first uh, Quasar comics, I was enthralled. And they kept that comic running, I think it's 63, after, 63 issues or whatever. And now it doesn't, they don't do that no more. Now they really cut corners and pull books by, you know, dozens if they're not fucking doing well. And yeah, yeah, it's maybe it's a business model. But back then you could, you know, Mary had a comic book for her. Justin had a comic book he liked and a run he liked. And I think we got to give that credit. The WandaVision, uh, Winter Soldier, Loki, all these things have their... You know, little great spots in their flaws, I'll admit that. They're not perfection, although if you want to argue, um, you know, Winter Soldier might have the most cohesive plot, well-written story. And, you know, sometimes a lot of people say that about the Winter Soldier's, uh, the, Cap- the second Captain America movie. It's like a 70s thriller espionage with Captain America in it, and it connects the tissue between the movies. But it's a solid movie for what it does, and people love it. And it's not the bombastic, world going to end, a uh, portal opens in the sky. And I think we have to acknowledge things like that. Like, this show is fun. And you know what? I bet you the people, I would be surprised if the people behind the scenes aren't having fun. And does it come off on camera? Yes. Do they like the irreverence and silliness? Yes. And it might be what we want. It's some small population and... If they will cater to that, I'm fine and I'm happy. Yes, but I wanted to improve in certain areas. Yeah, it's like a, you know, certain things to be more my way. But I've said this numerous times. Put out a quality product. Now, you want to argue me as a quality product? Yes, I could be making a contradiction because one of my obvious things is they should have maybe taken more time and had a four-month delay and do... Uh, you know, CRISPR, CGI, and get things totally right. So yeah, I, I will. I will give that. And if that wants to be some people's basis for, you know, confronting me with an argument about the show, I'm fine with that, and I would admit it. But I'm talking about my experience as a whole, getting from episode one to episode nine, and my experience was awesome. I had fun. This is, harkens back to me opening a comic book when I was fucking 10 years old, 11 years old. And it's hard to do for me. The nostalgia is there. I'm sorry. And it is powerful. Go read up on fucking these silly brain things and whatever you want to call it. Nostalgia is fucking important. And we look for that. And you do it right. You do it with talent and love. I'm there. And this has that. I can't tell you how captivating some of the characters are and the interactions. But yes, I can definitely see people rolling their eyes, shutting it off like it's not for them. I get it. I don't see the need to go on fucking line and talk about, you know, bullshit, but if that's your thing because you're doing it like me, fine. And I get that too. But if I ever came to my channel and was really letting a bad day get to me. I try to give insight into that. I try to give insight into um, them abusing a character. I don't like what they're doing. 
I, I discussed this with the Thor character. I'll put, let's go back. Thor, the first movie. I love that fucking movie. Second one's okay. It has flaws, and I understand people are a little disappointed in it. Thor Ragnarok, I fucking love that movie. Breathtaking use of a fucking Led Zeppelin song. But the trend of Thor going from a egotistical, stuck-up troublemaker, asshat prince, to realizing his worth in the first movie and him becoming a childlike goofball is not for me. I watched the new Thor Love and Thunder and I was desperately wanted him to show the growth he had from the movies, where it really culminates in Ragnarok, where he gets his eye taken out, and he has to take out Heller, and really starts Ragnarok and destroys his people into the endgame in the Infinity War. Now, granted, I'm going off on Thor because he's an established character that is played by a great actor, and they love his character. I love him too. I want him to go a different path. But I'm not going on fucking line and, you know, doing these podcasts with that in mind and hawking up on that. And, you know, I will say that my most viewed fucking podcast video on YouTube is my fucking rant on the Batman movie. And, you know, I've done it for the Justice League Snyder Cut, which can go fuck itself. I can see why people do it and the trend it, uh, it, it keeps you on because you'll get the attention and the numbers and stuff. And I'm, fault, I'm at fault in this. And I have a friend who I love who uh, points this out. Like, I don't, I'm not serious about looking to be a YouTube star in that sense. For me, this is therapy. It's something to leave behind of me when people want to look into, you know, Maybe who, who, who was Joe and part of my playlist are like that. And just talking about things that are on my mind that get me through day to day and week to week because these things are escapes. And, you know, I want to live in a world where the fucking chick is near seven foot tall. She's an attorney. She's a Hulk. And that's why I read the comic book. Right? I mean, certain comic books were made for certain people. This is made for... Certain people and the talent is there. The love and the effort they put in is superb. No, it's not perfect. Yes, it should have taken some time. But I'm sorry. I go from episode one to nine and I'm there. I don't check out. I don't, you know. So this could be, you know, a mixed bag. I, I get that. I can see this being... Trashed everywhere, whatever. I would say it's not appropriate. And it's more of, you know, some fucking Yahoo's just upset that, you know, it's, it's off-putting maybe to some people. And that I can get to, to an extent. But don't shit on people's parade. Don't. This is not one of those things where you want to get an uproar and start a big thing because it's such shit quality and you know, they're pushing it out to whatever, you know, drive their numbers up, I, whatever the fuck it is. I mean, you see this with video games, like I, like I said, where, you know, you clearly see this fucking game should have taken another six months and really tightened the bolts, and I will say that about the show. Yes, it could have used a little more time because what they tried to do is amazing. How they integrated everything, I fucking loved it. Even pulling in Mark Ruffalo with the Hulk and not being what I would have written myself or wanted to see in the aspect. Do it well, and I will buy it, and I will, you know, uh, consume it and not be upset and not be, you know, one of those things where I'm three episodes in and I'm going, you know what, I'm not really going to enjoy this show. I don't have a bias in that sense, but I am human. Was I a big fan of She-Hulk in the comics? Yes. I was really captivated by the fourth wall breaking that she did. Be uh, from what I remember, before Deadpool. Well, I'm not a fucking, you know, whatever. 
fucking, I can be pr- proved wrong, I won't be surprised. And I have this love for being a nerd and these things being on TV. I'm so happy. I remember making a private deal with myself. Uh, yeah, come on, remember. I know this is going to sound stupid, but it was the days of the AIDS pandemic, if you want to call it that. And I remember saying, oh, because the Spider-Man movie was coming out, like, all I want to do, if I live to watch the first Spider-Man Raimi movie, I think it was a Raimi movie, that I would, I could die a happy man. And however old I was at that age, right, 30, whatever, whatever the fucking Spider-Man came out, and everything has been enriching my life and making me happier and satisfied. Because we've gotten some wonderful stuff. I'll say this again. Marvel's quality of movies has maintained a really good standard with great peaks and not too bad dips. And that's just being honest about saying what is, you know, pushed out in quality and what is, you know, just pandering to a certain thing. And fine, if they're guilty of that, I'll admit that. Their formula and the way they do things. And guess what? She-Hulk will talk about that. And right to the camera. And done differently than a Deadpool would be. And there's a really, I found myself with a smile on my face. I don't know how much more of a review you need to really do and explain about a show. Is this is a different take on a show. It's a superhero, but it's not exactly what you would expect. Because she's trying to, as an actress and stuff, tell you in the show it's going to be a comedy drama about a law and order type thing and she just happens to be a she-hulk it's just you know and you got some great you know chemistry with the characters and there's some characters you just i don't want to see it's not enough to make you fucking you know not like the show but i think that's the point you know how that works like you know someone you love to hate and i don't feel there's been any super shortcomings even when you're using actors, like real life people, and talking about them and putting them on the show, I think She Hulk's reaction to things is um, spot on when you talk about comic book stuff and adapting it for the screen. I totally recommend She Hulk. Everybody should give it a shot, even if you don't like it. I mean, there's only so much you can ramble on about with a show like this. Yes, it's a CGI Hulk. I mean, yeah, they got the six foot seven. I, I showed a picture to uh, uh, my friend on Facebook of the on set She Hulk, who's beautiful and fucking tall. She's a, gi- she's a giant. And you see them wearing the same clothes because she'll do some of the stunts. But they got to put the CGI in. And is that a decision that's going to harm them in the end? In the back in the day, Bill Bixby turned into the Hulk, which was Lou Ferrigno. And this show. And its last episode of the next to last, whatever, takes that opening of the show and redoes it for She Hulk. And they do this same thing. And what I mean is, when Bill Bixby turns into Lou Ferrigno, the new She Hulk show, Tatiana Maslani turns into the CGI Hulk. But for the spoof they did, or the paying homage to the original, in, they had Tatiana Maslany and then another actress, Roy, like, rah, screaming like Lou Ferrigno would do. I fucking loved it. The show, it could, the, the show can show the flaws and the silliness about these and the decisions they're making. They're telling you, yes, they could have got a female and just had Jennifer Walters, like, eyes glow like the original Bill Bixby and then show some really cool camera scene where, you know, the bigger version of her rips out of the clothes and is raw. Yes. They didn't choose to do that. They wanted to capture the She-Hulk in their vision and it was a mistake for certain circumstances where it should have been put in, kept in the oven a little bit more and, and fine-tuned. I will give it that. But there's no way am I going to say this is not an enjoyable show that is going to... You can't forgive the little minor things because of what they're trying to do. And might that be an agenda for women power or whatever? I don't give a fuck. This is comic book stuff. It's in the comics. And was it done in the comics for that reason? Fun. You know what? I don't give a fuck. 
If there's a reason why there needs to be a certain amount of black superheroes in comics because what shitbags we were as fucking humans, then do it. I don't care. Get Indian representation in the Cherokee Nations. Like, whatever fucking mistakes we made and all the political bullshit, She-Hulk will take it and fucking turn it on its head. And that's going to be a powerful tool. And you bring in characters like Daredevil who had his own critically acclaimed run. And you lighten him up and you make him so human. It's just a growth, but a new version of Daredevil. And it's the vessel is the She-Hulk show. You can do so much. You cannot, I cannot even imagine how they can connect almost everything. Just by taking a chance on something like this. So kudos to everybody involved. No, it's not a, a, a epic of you know, perfection. Yes, they should have waited a little longer, but is the love there? Is the fun there? Is the entertainment there? For me, yes. In amazing abundance. And I'm just looking at the directors and writers, like the creator, Jessica Gow, is writing it. Some of the directors are the same. And when you get the momentum built up, there's a little bit of lulls here and there, but. I don't see the um, the things that make me angry. I don't feel the pandering bullshit nonsense, which is apparent in some movies, I will agree. And if they're doing it with a, for a purpose, then fine. I, you know, I usually let things go. I'm not really caring if they're trying to get a woke message up because that's the zeitgeist today, whatever. Uh, my brain works like, you know, it works, and it'll key up on things, it'll... I'll get honed in. And for some people, it's going to ruin their experience. Fine. She-Hulk might not be for everybody. But it is one of those shows I recommend everybody try and watch. Would you miss my finding yourself smiling and enjoying yourself? I say this. Is Tatiana Maslany is captivating in a sense, the way she acts and, like, she fits into the role. The She-Hulk portion, yes. Okay, so some people might have to get used to it. But... When you're going to do something like this, this is different from the Bill Bixby thing. You can't have Lou Ferrigno show up and for, you know, the standard two minutes and eight seconds be the Hulk and throw a rock and bust through a wall, beat the bad guys up, and all he does is growl and whatever. This is a fully integrated Hulk who they show from the beginning is not like Bruce. He doesn't have nine fucking personalities. She has, you know, none or one, two, whatever. In that sense, you know, the way we all have our duality or whatever. And she is more acceptable. She talks about being a woman and um, how it geared her up for controlling her anger. And that's a perfect moment to highlight because this is, oh, woke, whatever. Well, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Just the difference in me going to the store and a woman going to the store. Should give you a fucking highlight about reality. Pick a time of day, any time of day. Let's go noon. I go to the store. I walk out without a care in the fucking world. I go buy my fucking milk and drinks. And fuck anybody who comes up to me and my broad shouldered, stocky, <clears throat> maybe a little overweight, but, you know, common sense Brooklyn attitude. Now, same fucking thing. Take a woman. Sorry, but the reality is she's going to have to make sure she has place, she knows where she's going. She's going to be looking out for people. You, you have to be in this, you know, this is the reality we are. She'll have to hold the keys in her hand in a certain way. Maybe she'll call somebody and let them know where she's going. And this is like, there are outliers to everything. Yeah, I'm not an idiot, but this is reality. Go look up the evidence and all the fucking reports they do there's a whole list there's a fucking list that's like 30 items long that women do and this is noon i'm talking what happens when it's nine o'clock at night and she wants to go out and meet a friend at a bar the whole world is different it's just reality it's just the way it is it just has to be pointed out we got 30 things on a checklist women do before they go out on certain circumstances. And then the same fucking checklist for men, none of them are checked off. Because it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't. 
I'm way too strong and powerful to give a fuck. Yes. W would there be instances where I'm a little up nervous or a little wondering what's going on? Of course. I would just be living in Brooklyn, New York, going down the fucking street or whatever. And there's always, you know, situations arise. But for a woman, it's fucking different. And to make believe it's not, go fuck yourself. To say that this whole fucking country, it's fucking roots in shitting on women from fucking day one and the fucking religion and even the movie industry. So let's stop and give no fucks about them wanting to fucking send a message. Good. Send it. Send it loud and proud and fucking green. And right, maybe make the CGI a little better, but you get the point. Go. Jump through the fucking camera. Break through the fucking Marvel Cinematic Universe logo. Pick whichever fucking theme is up on that little fucking multi whatever TV screen. And kick the window in and go fucking tell the fucking people who create the show you don't give a fuck. And you're not going to fucking keep with the stu silly trends that people want. You're going to be unique. And you're going to go your own way. The show fucking says it. And I'm going to applaud that. I'm going to applaud the love and effort went into the show. I hope it gets another season. I hope she's integrated in everything. Yes, improve it here and there. Whatever. It's not perfection. I love fucking Mandalorian. But I'll, I'll fucking pick apart those things too. Way too short and fucking wonky fucking uh real fucking thin holding together glue of this fucking nonsense plot and stuff but i'm having fun i'm getting through it and i'm having a little bit of love for star wars again marvel's been knocking it out of the park and quality stuff and yes my bias let's go into fucking let's go fucking examine my bullshit but this is a trend we see all the bullshit happens when people are vocal minority and they shit and poo poo on stuff and i'm only preparing myself for this because like i said i don't do real deep dives until i'm done so as i'm doing this i'm not even sure what let's say my five people i go to to check on stuff i don't know what they're doing yes i come across things that i can't fucking help so i got i do got that idea but she hulk attorney of law fucking watch the show have fun with a comic book that is maybe not made for you but the experience and the chance that it will be is worth it i mean some great side characters are in this too and just the banter and the uh you know the the attention to detail that makes me smile like i'm 13 years old open up the comic you know she hooks on the cover talking to you it's it was an experience and I think this captures that. I think it does it well. I think it can even improve. And that's where maybe I'll leave this. Uh, I am really happy with this. I can't stress it enough. I, maybe it's just a mood I'm in. Maybe things are better in my life. Because I like the fucking Morbius movie. But it was that's something I had that feeling like. Maybe I shouldn't. But I do think it has quality in there. Better than the Venom movies. And if I'm looking at the She-Hulk, it's chancy. I put it in the same category as maybe WandaVision where you're going to lose people and people are not going to follow this correctly because they're just not into it. And I think that's a strength. We don't want all cookie cutter things. Although I will say the Marvel Netflix universe was fucking outstanding. Its vision was cohesive, even with the weak links like Iron Fist and Luke Cage in a sense where the shows were good, but, you know, they didn't highlight things. And Jessica Jones is probably the best written show ever still. I will say that. It culminated with The Defenders, and it was fucking outstanding. And this is not that. The tone between uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Loki. These things are different. They're taking a chance with what-if animated cartoon they're doing. This is, for me, a great time. This is a chance to look in and find something for people who aren't happy with normal, traditional Marvel. This is a chance they're going to love this. This is definitely made for a certain, a certain group of people, and I'm one of them. I'm a nerd. I will let things slide. Yes. Do it and improve it. I am there. Buffy, 
Vampire Slayer. Perhaps one of my greatest fun love shows ever. Star Trek. Name me good first seasons. There were great episodes, but it's hard, right? Maybe Deep Space Nine to an extent. But it's hard to give things a chance these days. These movie company, Marvel, whatever, Disney has the power to have something out that, like in the comic books, could have a run. It doesn't have to need to be the most insanely downloaded watch thing, but they have an audience for it. And people can look at it and fucking enjoy it for what it is. It's irreverent, it's corny, it's fun, and take not doesn't take itself too seriously. And can hit deep things and the balance between the writing, I'm liking it. I'm thinking it's quality and I'm recommending She Hulk, Attorney at Law. I mean, I don't know. Let's get this type of thing going more. Let's do different spins on it. Even if I don't like it. But I'm saying I do like it. I love She Hulk. But even if I don't enjoy it so much i want it out there i want people who are sitting around rolling their eyes at the whole thought of marvel comic stuff being surprised and enjoying something and that's the magic for me so i hope everybody's doing well and i'll talk to you all next time laters